this is the Provoke Brawn, and here I want to talk to you about the various points of interest and things to avoid when installing M2 NVMe SSDs, basically to make sure they're running at the right speed, that they don't overheat, and that everything's set up as it should be, and how to check that they're running at the right speed. If you've bought yourself a fancy NVMe M2 drive, which is PCIe Gen 4, so you want it to run at maximum speeds, that's like around 7,000 megabytes per second, then you need to make sure that you follow a few different steps in order to check that it's doing it and also not to negatively harm the performance of it. So I've installed a number of these different drives and in this one I'm going to show you Kingston Fury Renegade and here I'm installing it on the top spot on this NZXT motherboard. Now it's worth keeping in mind that in most cases you want to install on the top slot. So most motherboards have two or three or four M2 ports on them. I'd recommend using the top spot usually wherever possible because this ensures good speed. You can see that you can do it with a heatsink drive and one without. So you can see the KC3000 for example here that I'm installing. And this drive actually installs really easily on the, on the Zeus motherboard because it basically just has a clip to hold it in place. But you'll notice from these various different shots that there are thermal pads that sit underneath the drive and sometimes you get one that sits on top as well. So make sure you keep those and use them because they will help with the heat transfer to ensure that your drives run as fast as they should, especially where there's heat covers like this. And you can see sometimes when you remove these covers, there's little plastic stickers as well that you need to take off first off of the motherboard to ensure good contact between the drive and the thermal pad. A lot of the times you use a clip to hold them in place. Sometimes you have to use an M2 screw and you'll see me screwing down some other drives like that. But you can install multiple drives and this can lead to issues potentially on some motherboards where you're using more than one drive it can cause problems with speed and I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. But here you can see the ROG Hyper M2 card. This is actually an expansion card that you might well have seen in some of my build videos. This allows you to install extra and I have actually used previous ones from MSI where it allowed you to install four extra NVMe M2 drives in it. And in this one, you can just install two. You can either choose to raid the drives, so you can use them together in a raid configuration, or you can just put two drives in there and then access them. And this plugs into the PCIe X16 slot on the motherboard, so it allows you to theoretically add in two extra drives to a motherboard that potentially doesn't have as many ports on it. So if you're installing loads and loads of storage, you can do that. It then sits on the bottom, as you can see, below the graphics card. Not an ideal spot because it either blocks the graphics card or the fans, as you can see in this case, it's right down at the bottom, but actually hasn't harmed performance in that way. But one thing it does do is it does potentially have an impact on drive speed, so the drives that you're installing in there. So I've actually installed a Gen 4 drive in there, and in a second I'm going to show you how it's actually running at Gen 3 speeds. And this is something you might not realize when you first set it up. So I've shown you the steps previously for how to install a drive. If you've gone through this process, basically going into Windows and then opening up Disk Management. So you go to Computer, you click on Manage, and it opens up the Computer Management tool, and you can go into Disk Management from there to access the drive. Because quite often you'll find that you go into Windows, and if you've installed a new drive, it might not be recognized. If you've installed multiple NVMEs, you might find that they're not all there for some reason. So you open up Disk Management, and side note, you can access this by Create and Format Hard Drive Partitions through a search via the Start menu you as well. But when you open that, that up, you will find that you will usually see the drive has a black marking on it, which essentially means it's been unallocated, so it's not set up and ready to go, so it can't be recognized. So you need to create a new simple volume. Basically, we we're assigning it a drive layer and setting it up with that letter so that the computer will recognize it and it'll pop up in Windows Explorer. This is an essential part of the setup process. Usually if you're just installing one drive and you're putting Windows onto it, the PC will just recognize it and it'll be ready to go. But if you've got multiple drives or if you're adding a new drive to a system that already exists, you might need to go through this basic step to get it running. So now it's there and it's ready to access. But obviously once we've done that, we wanna make sure it's running at the right speed. Now, one of the ways you can do this is with your motherboard software. So in this case, I'm using a Zeus Armory Crate. However, this should work for other motherboard software. And if it doesn't, don't worry, I'm gonna show you in a second another tip for using it. So this motherboard software allows you to go and get information on the board in various different ways. And you can see all sorts of things listed here. But if you go into the settings specifically for the board, you'll find out the device info in there. So on the left hand side, you click on that and then go into the board itself. And then up the top, we have disk info on the right hand side. Now the disk info setting shows you a number of different things for the various different drives you've got installed. So if you click in the drop down and find 
the drive you want to look at. In this case, you can see the Kingston drive, the KC3000. And you'll notice that on the right hand side, it says transfer mode PCIe 4 X4. Now the X4 is the number of lanes, PCIe lanes, that the driver is using. X4 is the maximum that we want it to be using. So this is actually a good thing. It's also running at PCIe Gen 4 mode. So that's worth noting. Go through the other drives though, and you'll see the difference. So the Sabran drive is actually installed on the M2 Expander card. And you'll notice here that it's running PCIe Gen 3. So this is a Gen 4 card that's running at Gen 3. So the two things to look out for is sometimes you'll find if you install too many drives or you install them in the wrong spot or if the BIOS isn't set up correctly, you might find your drive that's a PCI Gen 4 is running at either PCI Gen 3 speeds or X2 instead of X4, or maybe even X1. So I've seen in the past instances where a potential drive that could run 7,000 megabytes per second is only running at like 500 megabytes per second or 1,000 megabytes per second. So it's really important to make sure that it's running at the right speed with the right amount of lanes. Now, another way you can do this is with Samsung Magician. Now, Magician is technically software for Samsung drives, but it will work with others as well. So you can see that it has the other drives listed in it. This is a free bit of software that you can download. When you do that, if you click on the drive details for the specific drives, you'll see the interface. So you can see interface PCIe Gen 4 X4. So this is a Gen 4 drive is running with four lanes so it should run at maximum speed and you'll find out under the drive details but also there's a performance benchmark tool so you can click on the performance benchmark tool and run through a benchmark that will then check the speeds of the drive this is really worth doing after you've installed your NVMe drive in my opinion because it makes sure that basically the drive is running at the right speed you've obviously paid for a drive you've installed it you don't want to go about thinking that it's running at maximum speed. If you paid a lot of money for a Gen 4 drive and you're running it at Gen 3 speeds or with just half the amount of lanes, that's obviously not ideal. So this is one of the ways you can do it. You can check a standard that it's set the right way and then you can obviously run a benchmark. Now, if you find that it's running at Gen 3 speeds or X2 instead of X4, well, go into your BIOS settings because there may well be BIOS settings that are holding it back. Unfortunately, I can't show you the BIOS settings because they vary from motherboard to motherboard, so it's really difficult to tell you what the right thing to do would be. If you want to run another tool that isn't associated with Samsung, you can use Crystal Disk Mark, and this tool will allow you to go through the test there. And you can also see the transfer speeds when using Task Manager as well. So if you open up Task Manager, press Control Shift, Escape, open up Task Manager, go to the Performance tab, click on the right drive that you want to check the speed of, and if you're doing things with it, or if you use Crystal Disk Mark, you'll see the speeds in sort of live mode showing the read write speed as the files are transferred around. And this can be a handy way to check on the speed. So there you go. Hopefully you found this video useful, all the different tips that I've learned about how to install the drives. Important things, thermal pads, make sure you keep them in place and use them wherever possible. Obviously, if you've got a heat sink, you don't need to worry about heat shielding, but just keep that in mind. Bear in mind that you want to install it as near the CPU as possible for the maximum speed. Another point is that if you do install four drives or more, you may find you're actually negatively impacting your graphics card because that can reduce the number of lanes that the GPU is actually getting. But in my experience, I actually haven't noticed a degradation in the quality of GPU performance despite this. So you can see I have loads of drives installed. My GPU still runs great. I get loads of good frames, great video editing and other things. But you may notice on some boards that it reduces the number of lanes. So again, that X16 lanes might actually end up being X8. So you might get half the performance potentially out of your GPU. So it's worth testing and checking these things and benchmarking before and afterwards to see what the performance difference is. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.